Well, hello. Welcome back to the message online, church online. This is the recap of the Stand By Me series. This is also going to be the final message for Church Redefined, which is an online message ministry that we started, that I started uh, just over four years ago. And this will be the final message, uh, the on, final online message for the Grove, Fort Collins, which is in, in Fort Collins, Colorado. And so, man, it has been a privilege. I don't take what I get to do lightly, getting to share this with you lightly, um, getting to um, kind of let myself go and be um, who God's called me to be, to share my life experience, to share what God's done in me and through me, in my marriage, with my family, in my personal life, um, is not an easy thing to do. But it's great if it helps people move forward in their faith with Jesus, if I can share what God's done in me and through me. And so when we knew this this day was coming, uh, as we are merging and stopping the online uh, messages ministry, I knew this day was coming. Um, What God has done this year through these series from the pursuit of purpose to FaceTime to stand by me, I think this is a call for us to be the cause, to go into all the world and make disciples to go and be the church where we are. And if we're ever going to do that, we need to understand our purpose. We understand what that relationship is with God. We need to understand how to abide in Him. And that's what the last five weeks have been about. So as we drop this last online message to you, man, I hope that you will take the principles and the teachings that we've laid out over the the last uh, four months to you since January. And I hope that you will apply them, that you'll use them in your everyday life, that you'll let them change your life. I think that's the hardest thing that we have to do about these gatherings, these moments that we join, gather online, is to go, man, am I going to believe this enough to let it change my life, to let it change my life? And when you do that, that's abiding in God. That's what it means to abide in Jesus. If you'll abide in me, I'll abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it'll be given to you. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. And so many people are walking the streets the face of this earth disconnected from God. And we as Christians, believers, are responsible to go into all the world, not to gather, but to go into all the world and make disciples. That happens best when Jesus, when people see Jesus through us. It only happens as we abide. I've shared so many times over this series, you can do anything on the face of the earth. You can do anything on the face of the earth under one condition, and it's to abide. All of our success stems from from abiding. And so I want to recap the last five weeks with you. It's going to be super short and quick. I want to come to you one more time and say thank you. Thank you for your engagement. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for walking with my family, for believing in our family, for believing in me, for believing in the message of Jesus Christ so much that you would take time to engage on a regular basis. It means more than you know. It means more than you know. Uh, It's not about being somebody else. It's not about You know, when you watch an online message, you have the opportunity to see the best preachers in the whole world, not just Americans, but all over the world. You have the opportunity to see them. So the fact that you would choose to engage with me here means a lot. It means a lot because I'm not those people and I'm not trying to be those people. I'm trying to be real and I'm trying to help you grow in your faith. This is not about, I was challenged the other day to say, well, what does Dusty's church look like? Guess what? I don't care. I don't care. I got challenged by my board a long time ago. Well, how many people do you want to reach? What's your number? I don't care. One. One's my number. What does Dusty's church look like? It looks like a church that is out in the streets showing people who Jesus is. Why? Because that's the commission. That's who we're called to be. Relationship, discipleship, community. It's the gathering. The gatherings, our gatherings should be an example of what it means to celebrate life in Christ to celebrate God adding to our number, not Dusty adding to our number or somebody else adding to our number. Our gatherings are about people coming to know Jesus throughout the week because we minister to them by our example, not by beating a Bible. And the consistency in our ministry out on the streets is what brings them to this place to where God builds a bridge from your heart to theirs and Jesus walks right across it. And that's what I believe we've been. I want to celebrate with you really quickly. In the year of 2022, we saw 209 people take Bibles home. We helped them to read those Bibles. 
We saw 94 people pray to receive Jesus. It's amazing. So much spiritual fruit. God is so intentional. We saw 54 people baptized total. Took so many people through Next Steps class, help people grow in their relationship with God. That is zero credit to me and all to God. It's a testament to being obedient. We came and it was amazing. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful again to all of you who have walked with us, who've prayed with us, who've supported us, who've texted me, said, hey man, keep going. It's all good. Because when you do what I do and what most preachers do, most people wouldn't say that, that being a pastor is, is hard. It's one of the hardest jobs on the face of the earth because you're dealing with, with people on a regular basis. You got to shake the haters a lot. And in doing this, you face and fight a lot of this. And I just want to say God is so good and he is um, so graceful and, I've, and I'm privileged. I'm privileged to get to do this, to get to continue to do this. And I'm thankful to be a part of your life. And so um, that's it. If you want to keep following this message, the message of the gospel, not the message of Dusty, um, they will live uh, on, on a merged account where, um, where I will email you and get you details of that in the future. But that will be the example of what Jesus has been through me uh, to others. And so, uh, again, thank you. Thank you again. So let's talk about the recap of abide, stand by me, knowing that some of the synonyms to abide, abide is kind of a churchy word, right? To abide means to be consistent, to be consistent. Consistency completes everything. If we're going to do anything on the face of the earth, we must abide. And so that first week we talked about being relaxed and, and we really kind of made fun of the fact that like when people say, hey, relax, that's kind of offensive. Right? I wasn't saying that. I'm saying come into your time with God relaxed. Because there's a massive list of to do's, your focus is, is going to, you're going to be disengaged. Right? And so be relaxed. Who you are fuels what you do. What you do. Who you are fuels what you do. So that I have to be relaxed to stay connected to who I am, to who God's called me to be. And we have to live in those promises. So that I'm not going to be distracted with what I do. I'm going to be focused on who I am because it's who I am that makes a difference in the lives around me, those people who are looking at me for leadership. It's who you are that God cares about. It's not what you do. You're never going to do enough that's going to make God go, oh, he's finally did it. She finally done it. No, God loves you the same no matter what. When you remain in relationship with God, he makes you better. When you remain in relationship with God, he makes you better. That's part one. And the scripture we used, remember this is the story of Mary and Martha. It's Luke 10, 38 through 42. And we're John 15, 4. I love the message translation of John 15, 4. Make your home in me as I make my home in you. That's the call to salvation. When we believe, when we receive, Jesus makes his home in our heart. He says, make your home in me like I have made my home in you. And so uh, part one was be relaxed. And to be relaxed, we must be less anxious, less anxious. You can't rush a good thing, right? Psalms 46, 10 was our scripture that, that we kind of used to lock in John 15, 4 in the story of Mary and Martha. Here's what it says. Be still, stop your striving, let go of your concerns and know that I am God. How do you do that? Come into your time with God under control. Come into that time with peace. And so your steps for that were to intentionally unplug every day from 1 to 5 to 15 to 30, however many, however many minutes you have, and to be 100% present with God. Trust it, lean into it, abide, abide. And the next step coming out of that was to take some time to reflect. Look at the goodness of God, see the goodness of God, start changing your perspective to see how good God is in your life. We went into overtime that first week. And so we talked about reflection in, uh, in overtime of that series. Again, that's all there, week one of Stand By Me. Part two, we talked about being reverent. Being reverent. And being reverent means to have high regard or deep, solemn respect. And the scripture that we referenced in there to kind of partner with John 15 and the story of Mary and Martha was Habakkuk 2.20. It says, The Lord is in His holy temple and the whole earth is silent before Him. So then, how do we do that? We're going to consider who we're meeting with, right? We're going to prepare our heart by being silent before God, we're going to let the quiet of that moment clear our thoughts 
so we can be present. It's not weird. It's awesome, right? The step for that was Psalm 104, which is be grateful. Come with thanksgiving and praise. Be grateful. Remember the relationship that you have that God gave you, right? Remember the moment that you asked Jesus to come into your heart. See the opportunity and the purpose in this time with him, right? Take time to pray and worship. When you pray and worship, it gets the focus off of you and it gets it onto God, which is where it needs to be. And then don't forget that, that those daily affirmations, those daily promises that God has given you. And then your, your next step, week two, was to incorporate daily prayer more than once and more than, more than once and definitely not only during your drive to or from work, right? And so we talked about in overtime that week, we just went overtime the first two weeks, and overtime that week we talked about examples to pray, how we can pray. We talked about the Lord's Prayer, and we gave so many different examples of that. And, um, and then we also talked about self-talk, about thinking, speaking, and believing who God says that we are. And so um, I think it was out of Colossians 3, 2 and Philippians 4, 8, which says, set your mind on things above, not below. Things that are pure, true, lovely, noble, right. Think on those things. Man, when I can flip my thought process to that, then I can actually speak those promises because speaking is Matthew 12, 34 and Proverbs 18, 21, which say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The tongue has the power of life and death. Those who love it will eat of its fruit. Remain in me and I'll remain in you and you will bear much fruit, right? And so then we speak those positive thoughts, the things that we should be thinking about, not the things that we are thinking about, right? And then to believe it is essentially to not have any doubt. That's Matthew 21, 21 and Proverbs uh, 4, 23. Do not doubt in your heart, but believe, believe it. And then we're going to live it. That's Hebrews 11, 1. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So walk by faith. Part three of Stand By Me is a recap. Man, you're getting all the good stuff right here. What does it mean to be willing? One way to be willing to come into my time with God open-handed. We're going to be eager. What does it mean? We're going to be eager. Eager. It's a great word, which means I'm ready. I'm prepared. Why do we do that? Because what uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 12 says, whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly and according to what you have, not what you don't. So many times we try to do what we don't have, to give what we don't have. God didn't ask us to do that. He asked that we would, that we would give eagerly according to what we have. And so then if you only have 33 seconds in the morning, give those 33 seconds eagerly to God. If you have 10 minutes, if you can actually get up 15 minutes early, if you have, give what you have eagerly to God. The one thing you give to God that you're never going to give back is time. We all have the same amount of time every day. When you give God time, he gives back. But you have to give it eagerly, not, not a half-hearted have to, an expectant, eager get to, right? God's not going to ask you to give or to use what you don't have. And so your step with Psalms 119.5 says this, If only my ways were committed, directed, and established to keeping your statutes, so then let your words and your actions match His, right? Seek His will for your life. That's Matthew 6, 9 through 11. Lord, your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. And your next step was knowing to be an example means to be willing, which means there's action to it. Being willing means action. It creates action. So lead it in your life. Part four of stand by me was to be expectant. How am I to be expectant? That is to be energized and enthusiastic. Enthusiasm bled into week five, my favorite word, which is Hebrews 11.1. 1. We Walk by faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see. So then, Romans 12, 11 through 12, do not burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert and cheerfully expectant. Press in and never quit. Press in and never quit because God is faithful. Because God is faithful. So then how we do that is we expect to have a good time of fellowship. I expect when I come into my time with God for it to be good. I expect to receive a blessing, Right? From my time with him, I'm, I'm expecting God to contribute to my life. I'm not here to consume something so I can say that I know. It's something in my heart that I believe. And so then we talked about those steps being we need to read, we need to pray, we need to worship, we need to listen, we need to seek with intentionality, with enthusiasm, we need to do all those things with purpose because our goal is to learn 
and grow to become like Jesus so we can live it out for others, so we can lead it where we are. And so your next steps were to answer these two questions. What am I currently believing God for? And where do I need God to work in my life? We ask those two questions, huge questions. And the final, the finale was be alert, be alert. How can we be alert? We need to be rested. If we are not rested, we will never be alert. A lot of people think that when they wake up, because I'm awake, I'm alert. And that's false. Okay, if you've only got three, <laughs> if you've only got three hours of sleep, you have a pulse. You're not alert, right? And so then, ready and unrushed is what it takes to be alert. We saw that so much with Mary. She was like, Jesus here. For the first time, she's like, hey, I'm not doing that. I'm going to be over here, right? Why? Why should I be alert? 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says this. Be alert, standing firm in faith, full of courage and strong and strong. I've got to be, I've got to be aware, right? So then we need to remember that we're meeting with the creator of heaven and earth, the one who made me. This is an enthusiastic get to, right? It's a responsibility that I carry in my relationship with God because I'm committed to it, right? I'm not just convinced this is a good thing. Matter of fact, I'm not just committed to this, I'm compelled. Paul said he's compelled. He says, woe to me if I don't. Woe to you if you don't come into a time with God expectant and alert with some enthusiasm, right? And so then we talked about your action step, which is this week, right? Setting an appointment, putting it on your calendar, making a reminder, all of my time with God is on my calendar. All my time with Heather is on my calendar. Every time I open it, I see God and I see Heather. My top two relationships in my life, right? Put it on there. Okay, so then what's the, the practical, physical way to be alert? When you get up, don't hit, the, don't hit the alarm roll over. Put your feet on the floor, right? Wash your face. Wash your face. Turn on some light. Not this light, this light, right? Grab a cup of coffee. If you don't drink coffee, tea, grab something to drink. You should probably drink some water. Matter of fact, you, you've been um, on a water fast for six to 10 hours. You're dehydrated. You're ready for water. Grab a cup of water. Find your place. Create a plan. Be consistent. Your next step in all this is to follow the plan. And know that the plan is not God. Don't create religious activity. Don't create rote religion. Don't start doing something because you need a routine. The routine is sitting down. That's it. Sit down. And every routine have these five attitudes. Be relaxed. Be reverent. Be willing to do whatever God says, right? Be expectant. Be expectant. And be alert. Be alert. This is the first one. I moved to the last because it's so important. We forget it. We assume it a lot. Everybody knows what assumption does. When you come into your time with God with these five attitudes, life comes. You're, you are, you receive. God contributes to you. His power his word transforms your life so you become more like him so that people can see you or see him in you outside of this conversation, outside of this podcast or this message or this room. It happens out there because we're all called to go and make disciples. And so my challenge, my charge is be the church. Be the church. I'm going to close with, with one story. I was uh, in Michigan a couple weeks ago and I was listening to a, a guy pour out his heart. He'd been on a leadership retreat with some Christians. He wasn't himself a Christian, but he was with some Christians. And they posed a question to him to ask him, hey, tell me if you could sum your story up in five minutes, just tell me what that is. And as he began to share, his wife started crying and, and he's going back and he's, he's essentially going back and forth with this guy and he's talking about how meaningful that moment was on that trip. And then another guy from the side goes, Hey, now tell me, tell me if you will, how long would you have to be in a small group? These are Christian men asking these questions. This is not ugly. How long would you have to be in a small group? How long would you have to be in church to share that story? And the man said, I could never share that story in a small group 
or at church. And the reason that I could never share it in either of those environments is because it wasn't about the church. It wasn't about the church. It wasn't about church. And I took out my note, a little emotional, took out my, my phone, I take notes on my phone, and I asked myself, how do we take the church out of the church? Because what we've made it is not what it's intended to be. It takes disciples to make disciples. And if we're ever going to make disciples and fulfill what the Great Commission says, as we're called to go into all the world, if we're ever going to do that, we have to abide. And we have to be the church where we are. And so that's my challenge to you. Just remember this. God is far more concerned with who you are than he is what you do. When you get to heaven, he's not going to ask you about a bunch of lists and accomplishments, okay? that you did. Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Value people. To see people as God sees them, you need to see yourself as God sees you, right? You need to love yourself as God loves you so that you can go and love others the same way that you love you, right? So don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength with everything you have. And love your neighbors yourself. The only way to do that is to abide in Jesus. You can have anything on the face of this earth under one condition. Abide. Abide. And so, find your place for going to abide. Really simple, nine points. Find your place. Identify your start time. Be intentional. Read, pray, worship, write, reflect, if you want to call it journaling, listen without stopping. Do not be interrupted. Let those moments be those moments in your relationship with God. When you read, read for joy. Read for joy to receive, not to consume. Don't be afraid to highlight Write in your Bible, make it your own. They make more of them. Number one selling book of all time. It's always going to be in print. We'll give you one if you need another one, okay? When you read, read out loud, but read quietly. It helps you internalize. It helps plan your heart. Read an orderly method. Don't stop in the middle to go off on some study. Just read it. Read it as it is. Receive. Put yourself in that place, right? And then number nine, let it transform your life. Let it transform your life. Because daily discipline leads to transformed desire. The hungrier you get for God, the more he's going to be alive through you. Make your home in me as I make my home in you, and you will bear much fruit, much fruit. Be the church. Father, thank you so much for this series, for this season of life, Lord, for the opportunity you give me, for what you want to do on the face of this earth, Lord. We know it's through people. I know it's through people. I believe it's through people, Lord. There's nothing greater on the face of this earth than the cause of Jesus Christ. Lord, as you called, created, chose each one of us. You called us into existence. You called us by name, Lord. There is a plan and a purpose, Lord, for every soul that breathes. So I ask you, Lord, to help us be your hands and be your feet where we are, where we go. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to get out of the way, for letting the focus not to be on us, Lord, but to be on you through us because of who you are to us, who you have made us to be, who you've called us to be, Lord, the promises that we stand on, Lord, that as we are still, and that we're not striving, Lord, but we're only living to be an example of you so we can go where we are and be an example, Lord, because as we do that, you're with us. You tell us in that commission as we are to go into all the world and make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will be with us wherever we go. That only happens if we abide in you. So help us abide. Help us to remain, to stand by, to make our home in you like you do in us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, thank you. Thank you. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you tremendously. May your eyes be enlightened. May you see more clearly. May you, may you hear more deeply. 
May your hands be used more effectively so you can go out and fulfill the plans and the purposes God has for you. I love you. Thank you. I'll see you soon.